Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's indeed a great privilege to talk about South Asian security. Well, why do we need intelligence? I think it's very obvious that the people who have the diplomatic skills do require some supplementary intellectual support <laughs> to know that, well, when we are talking about South Asia, the Chinese dimension has got a dynamics of its own. And if you are talking about the South Asian security, its parameters are different. But anyway, leave aside that. I'll tell you one basic thing. The rationale and the justification of a South Asian security was understood and underlined even before India became independent. And when, that means India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, that Jinnah had said that one of the justifications for Pakistan would be that there will be an impregnable wall to protect India from its west and its east. Mahatma Gandhi had felt that probably there are no armies required. The entire South Asian or the entire subcontinent would probably be able to live in peace. The question is, that despite this rationale and the effort thereafter, why did it not happen? And why is it not likely to happen the day that we are handling it? And if Mr. Manishanka here feels that the time is right, I think we are just moving in the reverse direction. It could have been the right time if we could have handled the things the way that they should. The major reasons, and I would like to say the first thing is, we should understand that this region faces no external threat from outside except India, and which is the other dimension which we talked about China, we'll talk about it later, or probably in some other discussion. The region faces security problems either from within or from each other. So there is nothing as a common threat. There are similar threats faced by many countries. You know, if I have got a, 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 a pair of pit bulls, that threatens my neighbor and is also having another four pit bulls which are threatening me. We don't say that it is a common problem. The dogs, stray dogs with the rabbits in the street may be the common problem. But we are the part of the problem for each other. And the solution will lie not in trying to say that we are forcing, first converting the similar problems into, into common problems. And the failure of the state of the region to convert their similar problems, which are plenty, they have got even on today. We have got problems not only of terrorism, and I'll talk about terrorism later. We have got this thing as the largest concentration of the small arms. We have got the largest movement of the explosives. We have got the drug centers in the, in the, uh, this thing, which is the center of the global production and uh, trade of drugs, human trafficking, and everything that's going on. There have not been a concerted effort to convert these similar threats into common threats. On the contrary, countries like Pakistan thought that there lies a strategic opportunity of using the threat to the internal threat or the other threat to the other country as a strategic opportunity. When we say that terrorism is a common threat, let us understand it. That lashkar e toiba is a threat for us, not for Pakistan. Hafiz Saeed or Daud Ibrahim is a target for us, not for them. Similarly, probably, what their threats are, are threats to not, are not the threats to us. Unless we devise a way that whatever threatens us is a threat to you also. If Haqqani might be a threat to Afghanistan, it is not a threat to Pakistan. When Haqqani becomes either a threat or an asset to both the countries, then it becomes a common threat. In a common threat, the, the definition of the enemy is common. The objectives to be achieved are common. The methodology and instrumentalities through which the cooperation has to be sought, they are common. If these three are divergent, there can be similar threats, but not they are the common threats. So that's the first reason. The another reason is that many states in the region are, state, are still in a state of flux. They have not been able to create the concept of, or crystallize their state idea. 
So, some of them survived only on a negative idea. Pakistan was created on an idea that if there is a Hindu India, there has got to be a Muslim Pakistan. Good enough, it was created on that. But thereafter, if anti-Indianism continued to be the state idea, the defense policy or the foreign policy or the intelligence policy or the internal policy, everything was, how is it, will, what is that that can do that will harm India? Now, I'll tell you a small example. When India's economic uprise start becoming little visible in early 2000, there was a series of meetings in the ISI in which one of the things which was being discussed was that if India becomes a software giant, if India becomes an economic power, it's a grave security threat to Pakistan. Its economic power will be converted into its military power. Its economic power will give it a greater accessibility and, and uh, um, uh, uh, approval in the community of nations. The Kashmir cause will be lost. And that is where the <coughs> terrorism was taken out of Kashmir to the hinterland and only the economic capitals and the economic hubs and the centers like Bombay, uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Delhi, they started becoming the hubs of that. Now, this is there's a plenty of interrogations in which the Pakistanis who were arrested, they had told that we were asked that even if you have the opportunity of operating in this thing, you have got to move out and get to the economic center. Make Bangalore as your target area. So Bangalore, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, these become the target areas. Now, if India's economic rise is seen as a threat, there cannot be a common security community or cannot be a common architect. If it is economic rise is seen as an opportunity, as an opportunity for the nations and the region, as an opportunity which will improve the aspirations, which will improve the way of life, the quality of life of the people. 36 percent people, 550 million people in this region are living below the poverty line, and we are spending 55 billion dollars on, ex on defense expenditure. Unless this mindset changes, that now if India rises, Pakistan has got an opportunity to solve its internal problems. And if India feels that they, they, it has got a vested interest in the stability, in the rise, in democracy, in economic upliftment of Pakistan, unless that commonality is developed, I don't think that there's much scope. And the, the, when, when I say that we are going in a different direction, is, that is, instead of security cooperation, we are giving a wrong template to what we are doing is appeasement. Now, in case you throw stones on my house, and I say, you stop throwing the stones, I'll allow you to have the vegetables from my garden free. It is not a security cooperation. This is no security cooperation that is in return for closing the camps and not allowing the terrorists to be trained and equipped and supported by you. India should give you the concession and say, you know, in Sir Creek. Or in case you allow the, uh, you allow the army convoys of the IAS forces going to... Uh, going to uh, uh, Afghanistan, you, uh, yeah, the money will be allowed or uh, the aid will be given to you in return for that. This may be anything else. I am also not telling that in statecraft it is not required. It may even be desirable and necessary as a statecraft. But it is not cooperation. If we give it a wrong template, we reverse the direction. If this is the cooperation, that there can be a nuclear blackmail there can be no security cooperation. Security cooperation will be when we are able to achieve and find the common objectives that with our efforts, with our talent, with our manpower, which there is plenty, we are able to achieve the common objectives. And if this has to come, I think time is running out, I won't take much of a time. There are three important things which we have got to do. One is that economy is the biggest driver. And therefore, let us do everything that can take, and India has got a much greater role in that that in the South Asian countries, what India can contribute to develop the economy. Democracy is another very powerful thing. Let the strong democracies and the democratic institutions come and start this thing. Thirdly, and most importantly, let there not be any premium. Let there not be any premium on your wrongdoing for which you can think that you can capitalize. You make it a precedent, the, the appetite for this increases and it will become much more difficult. At what cost Pakistan was allowed to become nuclear? Because it was felt that there is a cost for getting support in Afghanistan at a particular point of time. And therefore, people turned the blind eye. And the cost probably is not even known today. We do not know what is in store in the next 10 years to 15 years, that what is the cost of these short-term appeasements, what you call as a security cooperation. Thank you.